Hey everyone, so on this week's episode of Make It With Calvin, a long overdue video, how to tear down the hot end on your artillery 3D printer. Now in this case I'm using my Genius because I do actually have a blockage in here that I need to deal with, but this would be the same for your X1 or really any printer that's using the Titan extruder setup that has the heat sink separate from the extruder plate. So let's dive into it. Also, you should note that I'm using this nice little um, Bondus brand Gorilla Grip fold-up tool. I personally prefer this over the little Allen wrenches, but everything should stay the same. So let's start the teardown. Step one is we need to remove this fan here. And I should also note that I believe I did put a little thermal compound between the heat sink and the body. So if I have that on there, that was done by me at an earlier date. It's very simple to do. Also, yeah, it's recommended. Okay, now we've exposed the heat sink. And like I suspected, I had put some thermal compound on there. Ooh, that's messy. So that's why my heat sink didn't fall off. Now, like I said, the procedure stays exactly the same, except for the fact that I am going to wipe off the excess thermal compound just so it's not an issue. Okay, with that messy task out of the way, we can come along and loosen up the four screws that are there. Now, a word of warning. I have seen people complain that they have stripped these screws out. Definitely, if your screw is looking a little bit chewed up, take your time, be careful. And also make sure that the end of your hex wrench is not chewed up as well. Because that's the biggest problem I find is people try and work on things with tools that aren't in the best of shape. And, well, it doesn't end very pretty. So... Just take your time when doing this. Be gentle. If something seems a little too tight, double check it's not bound up. All that good stuff. Okay, now, don't be surprised if when you go to pull this apart, it kind of falls apart on you. Here is the extruder tension mechanism. I'm not going to adjust that. I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, let's see. Uh, there we go. Here is the feeder gear with the little hobbed area and the two bearings. Don't worry if your bearings do or don't come out. Just keep an eye on them. And then the mythical uh, extruder lever, which surprisingly looks to be in good shape. Surprise, surprise. Now at this point, I'm gonna pause filming, I'm gonna readjust everything, and then we'll come on back. Okay, we're back. So what I did off camera is I just disconnected the thermistor and heat block. It might actually be a good idea to do that when you start out, but you know, hindsight's 2020. So while we're here, let's take a quick peek at things. Obviously we have the two set screws right there for the Kraken style hot end, uh, heat break I mean. I might actually have to undo those. But one thing that I constantly see on the printer page is people asking about this part right here which has the ends that look like they've been nipped, they actually haven't. This is the filament guide that holds the PTFE liner in place that also seals against the hot end and constantly people are asking, is this part broken? No, it's not. It's actually designed like that so that when the extruder gear is in here, well, it's in there somewhere, um, it's allowed to get as close as possible to there to provide the shortest possible distance between the filament not being guided. That's what allows this thing to just burn through flexible filament like nobody's business. So no, this part is not broken. Yes, it's very critical. If you keep it out, you will probably probably be posting up later saying that I can't print flexibles right now after working on my hot end. So as for me, I can definitely see that the top of the filament is mushroomed over. So I'm going to see what I can do to just gently... 
I did a Linus there. Uh, gently get that out. So let me deal with that off camera and we'll be back. Well that was easy. I was able to just grab the end of the filament and just gently pull it out. So let's uh, pull the part out so you get a better idea of what's going on here. A little bit tricky to see because it's kind of black on black on black but here is the tube. Here's the guide and you can see how the tube rests inside the guide like that. So yes, this piece is very, very, very important. I can't stress that enough. So with that like that, I'm going to say this is probably good and we can proceed with the reassembly, which I won't lie is a little bit tricky just because this whole assembly right here, which I think I'm going to clean out, is a little bit loose and floppy without any of the screws inside to hold everything together plus dealing with the tensioner and the arm can get a little bit crazy but you know what this is make it with calvin we are going to make this work all right now it's time for reassembly and i won't lie this part is a little bit tricky so what we're going to do is we're going to take and reinsert the filament arm this guy right here you'll also notice that this thing is a little bit floppy one thing we can do to remedy that is we can just come along and insert a screw temporarily to one of the screw holes that we're not really twisting it in there it's just a press fit it just prevents the whole thing from trying to flop around on us so now we can take our tensioner you should also note that I've never adjusted the tension on it from the factory and yes I understand some people say that theirs comes with a lot of tension I'm not denying that can't happen but I'm just saying I've never tweaked it. So actually I think I should put the gear on first. There we go. Oh, another note. Um, I see a lot of people complaining about the gear being plastic. Believe it or not, the gear being plastic is actually not a bad thing. The reason why is because, believe it or not, a metal gear would require more work in terms of lubrication and potentially cause more wear, while the plastic gear is technically self-lubricating therefore it doesn't need anything and also speaking from years and years of radio controlled car experience you'd be amazed what a plastic gear can actually survive abuse wise now I'm not saying that they're infallible and things can't go wrong but what I am saying is you're perfectly fine with the plastic gear on here and going to metal probably will not do anything to help you and potentially could almost make more problems so please just don't okay so now it's time to install the backing plate and obviously we're going to take our time here because we have wires and things we need to line up and everything like that and yes perfect it is pretty much slid into place. You'll notice it does wibble, wibble, wobble. I can't think today a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take one of the screws. And I'm just going to carefully screw it in there. Just to help hold everything in place. Also, I should make note that the extruder body screws are longer then the fan screws, fan screw, extruder body screw. Alright, now that we have the extruder plate installed, we can reinstall our heat sink. And obviously this is a good time, if you haven't put any thermal compound on there, to consider doing it. I'm not going to say it's 100% necessary, but like a lot of stuff, it's not a bad idea. Also, make note of the direction in which your fan was originally installed. So obviously, you want to make sure it's blowing air the correct way, not the wrong way, or things might not work so well. And just like that, our hot end teardown and reassembly is done. Now, obviously, I still need to reconnect everything, but that's relatively simple. Hopefully, you found this useful and helpful. As for tensioning, I might be covering that in a later video. And yeah, uh, just make sure that once you've got everything assembled for you, the final assembly, I should note, 
to just double check that you can move the extruder gear smoothly. If it feels like it's binding or it's really hard to turn, something's probably wrong. Loosen everything up, double check it, and go back. So, hope that was useful, and I'll see you here next time on Make It With Calvin.